What's up, everybody? Aaron and Paige here back on the podcast, episode number seven. Again, we're doing a late night session here, rainy night in Windsor, Ontario. So we thought we'd talk about this week about kind of raising kids in the digital age, kind of like this digital world with screen time and cell phones and all that type of jazz and kind of how we kind of manage it and well, how we try to manage it and whatnot. So Paige is going to potentially take the reins out here because I know how much she loves talking about the screen time and stuff like that. So well, I just feel like you and I have <clears throat> like very different opinions about technology in general. <laughs> like I feel like That's this true. whole AI thing has been like, if you want to understand yours and like the difference between you and I, yeah. Talk to us about AI. Because yeah. you, like, it's like you to a T. Like, AI came out and you were so... Intrigued. Intrigued and, like, gung-ho for it. Like, you were like, it's so cool. Look at it, all that it can do. This is amazing. We need to get on this. We need to be a part of this. Like, this is the next thing. And I just feel like, You're like no. my response is just also me. Like, I yeah. was like, no, I'm not interested. I want no part of it. I don't want this new stuff. I, like I don't, my life I don't like, no. need new, more technology, more things to catch up on. Like, I feel like I have hit the point in my life where I have learned everything I need to know <laughs> about technology and anything beyond this. Is just something that our kids can nag us about as they get older. Dad, and I just have no interest in learning it. Yeah. And like, because it freaks me out. Like, you yeah. get excited about these things, which is fine. Yes. But for me. I see the potential in like how it can help humanity. But there's also the, there's also I, the dark side. And I feel like for technology. me, I see all of like. The potential negatives of it. So, so I, yin and yang. Yeah. I think it just freaks me out. The thought of like the world that our kids are growing up in versus the world that we grew up in. Yeah. Like I really think that when we were like, I don't know what, maybe like five to 10, mm -hmm. five to 15, like that was probably the best period of time as far as technology goes yes because it was accessible like the internet was a thing like you started having like the little kia sierra or like the nokia phones that were kind of yeah like kinda, there, there were cell phones but no but there. they were just so like you didn't your kids didn't have them and but it was like, like new technology to yeah, have a camera so phone not even like even that was i mean not when we were five it, but yeah. like 15 yeah so like I feel like during that 10 year period of like five to 50, like that was like peak because you could still have the world at your fingertips, but it wasn't an all consuming thing. And I feel no. like that's where technology has gotten. Well, we're to. Was it the millennials or whatnot? We're like the, we're like the only, we're like the age group of, like generation that grew up kind of like our parents, our parents did, but also was on the cusp of like how our kids are growing up now. So we kind of saw a little what? bit, we saw a little bit of the, the old. Oh, with a little bit of the I understand. Like we were kind of like, we're, the, we're, we were like the intersection of like pre-technology and yeah. technology. I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like we had that golden period in our youth where it was like the perfect mix. But now I just think that like, like the whole AI thing really just freaks me out. Cause I think that when our kids are in school, obviously I know that all of these new technology and what, like they all serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. I get that there's benefits of these things, but I think it freaks me out that our kids are going to be in school and they're not going to need to learn how to properly research and find things 
that are like peer reviewed quality resources. And I also think it's going to get harder to find those things. Yeah. Because now with how easy it is to Photoshop and how easy it is to Photoshop, it's more like how easy it is. You can generate a full image that never existed. Yeah. And so, but that that freaks me out though. Like there's just, there's so many possibilities that I feel like they are growing up in an age where it's going to be almost impossible to know who. What is real and what's fake. What's real, what's fake, who to trust, where to get reliable information. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there's going to be a way. Yeah. And that's something that our kids will know. Like they'll grow up learning these things. But I just feel like, not that I think in our careers, like I don't need to write a peer-reviewed no. research article at work to get me through the work day. Like no. it's not like that. I it's not that I need that in my everyday life. But learning the skill of finding like this is backed by science, proven research, mm-hmm. and here it is. And I think that was a valuable lesson that you learn. And now kids yeah. can just go to an AI like you, and you have, have it generate an entire paper for them yeah. without ever having to do any type of research themselves. But even so, like, even trying to find, like, going to find, like, certain research papers and whatnot, you had to go get, go into a database and you had to get access to the database and whatnot. And now you can just basically type in find me the most current peer-reviewed articles on yeah. so-and-so you know Which, plot it'll go through all that but then i feel like a lot of people aren't just they're not just reading they're not reading the articles and whatnot some people are but people are just saying hey from here now generate an yeah. essay i just feel like it's so hard how do you teach your kids integrity and when that is the way that it is yeah like how are we going to instill in our kids that like even though there's something out there that can do all of this work for you building that work ethic yourself and knowing this information yourself and actually taking the time to read and learn and understand these things are going to serve you in the long run more than just typing into something write me an essay about this yeah i think i think it has to be along the lines with the obviously with this ai stuff kind of helping with creativity i think i think that's the whole thing you gotta like things that they wouldn't have thought of like they were saying before like having trouble crafting something together and then maybe hey can you generate this and it generates it and then oh you got some ideas then you can kind of work off that base from there and not just copy paste type thing i guess creating more of like a creative mind and thinking beyond what you know in your head that's what yeah. I think. I think it just, how you have to kind of go about this stuff it like, just yeah, freaks me out it's a lot right it's a lot right now and it's going to be even well, crazier probably 10 years from now when they actually are yeah able and to I, use this stuff and i think even just like the quality mm-hmm. of life and the quality of parenting now versus what it was when we were kids is so different. Like we were talking about this the other day in the car that like when we were kids, if my mom sat to play with me, she was focused on me sitting, playing with me. If the only screen time that was screen time was the TV, it was in a tablet. Yeah. Or like if we sat to watch, if we sat to watch a movie as a family, it wasn't, my dad doing you know whatever my mom playing on her phone my siblings all watching their phones and having the tv like how many times do we sit down as a family to you know whatever or Addie will say like oh can you come play with me and you like catch yourself playing like checking your phone looking at social media doing all these things and it's like I mean I'm guilty of it too like it's not like it's a one-sided thing in this house and i mean i'm sure just about every other house yeah like it's addictive and it's like we spend so much time hearing about how 
any, you know, no screen time before one, 20 minutes, like Addie should have what, like 20 minutes, half an hour at her age, something like a very small amount. And it's like, how do you enforce that when you spend how many hours a day looking at a phone? Plus, however much time you might have the TV on and like going at the same time or whatever. Like, how do you, like, I feel like kids just learn so much better by example. And so it's like, how do you instill these values of like limiting screen time and limiting all these things when we spend all day long on our phone? And sometimes I do think about like the quality of time, like, quality time that we spend with her yeah and how is she perceiving that versus the way that I was able to perceive that time with my parents and I feel bad like sometimes I catch myself like at bedtime is a big one for me because when she was a baby we have like I nursed her to sleep until she weaned and then I would like I snuggle her until she falls asleep and when she was a baby I would just mindlessly scroll on my phone while I was putting her down and now I do try, I catch myself every single night. I'll be scrolling on my phone. And then I'm like, what am I doing? Like, she's yeah. not going to want me to do this forever. And so then it's like putting down my phone and talking to her and, you know, like trying to make sure that I take that time to have like connection with her before I'm um, picking my phone back up because she started to doze off and... Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it is really hard to manage. And it's so easy to have this attitude of like, do as I say, not as I do type deal. And then I just feel like with how much technology is growing and taking over, I feel like it gets harder and harder as a parent to manage even how much time we spend. And then it gets harder and harder to limit for our kids yeah because they see us on it and then it's like well i think everett's waking up they have a guest joining (laughs) us but i do also feel like i am not one of those people who feels like i can say do as i say not as i do like i do really feel like i try to put myself into her shoes and like what does this feel like for her sorry i had to go get Everett kind of woke up, so you have a little bit of a guest here. Yeah, I think it's just, it's really hard to try to manage screen time and encourage your kids to walk away from screen time and enjoy, you know, the great outdoors, you know, all of these things. When they turn around and you're, you know, you take them to the park and they turn to look at you and you're on your phone. Yeah. You tell them to play at the beach and they turn around and you're on your phone. Like, yeah. It's hard to tell them. It's hard to say, hey, you can't have this much screen time when, yeah, you've been on your phone basically the entire day. And I think it's also, like, even if, you know, we were, like, the perfect example of, oh, we don't give our kids more than 20 minutes of screen time a day and we follow all the recommendations. And mm-hmm. even if we were that way, it's so hard because you go out into the world and they're going to interact with other kids. That do the same thing. That are in the same scenario. Yeah. And then and they're going to ask, a, oh, do you see who this Paw Patrol? Did you see this? Do you see that? And like. Yeah. Like we. So Addy really didn't watch very much TV. Yeah. Until she was, I don't know, over one, around one. Mm-hmm. And then it was like she would watch a very tiny bit. Usually it was like when I had gone, when I started back to work, you would put on like an episode of something while you were getting dinner prepped. Yeah. And stuff that I used to kind of watch as a kid. Yeah, like we were pretty picky. Boy, he's rolled in like, I can't even remember what he used to put on. Full House. Full House, yes. And then she used to watch Blues Clues, if you know. Like, that was, like, her show that she would watch while I was home with her. And so, I mean, not, like, we don't follow all of the recommendations, guidelines, whatever. Like, she definitely has more screen time than I think we would like her to. 
But there was still, like, you know, we tried to avoid shows like Coco Melon and, like, yeah. I mean, even Very Mickey Mouse. Very high the... st- stimulating shows with lots of colors, lots of movement, lots of da, 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 all over the place. Like, basically, like, all the check boxes of things you want to avoid in a TV show if you're going to expose your kids to TV. Yeah. And so we did try that. And then it's like she goes to daycare and she's exposed to it. Yeah. Which and obviously we can't. It's out of our control, right? Yeah. Well, because at the time, like, when we initially filled out our paperwork for daycare, they asked, like, is there TV, like, is there programs that you watch or don't, whatever. And at that point, I filled those out just before she turned one, so she really didn't watch TV at all. So I put she doesn't get screen time at home. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, you know, you're at another house for however many hours a day with all these other kids who do get screen time. And so, like, we had never shown her Paw Patrol. She comes home and talks to us about Paw Patrol. We'd never shown her Coco Melon. She comes home and talks about Coco Melon. I didn't grow up watching Mickey Mouse. So the first time she asked to watch Mickey Mouse at home, I was like, okay. And I put it on, and I watched about 30 seconds before I was like, (laughs) I am overstimulated, so I need to shut this off. Yeah. Like, so it's it's hard because, you know, like, A, we're not the shining example, no. but B, even if we were, she's going to move into the world with all of these kids who have been exposed to Jesus. all of this other stuff. And it's like, how do you navigate that? Yeah. You do as best as you can, right? We try and do as best best we can like you said we're not the the golden child of doing all this stuff but we try and do our best yeah and what like with what we have i feel like we're fairly middle ground when it comes to things like this yeah like we don't like we still don't watch coco melon and it's like high stuff like yeah that. Like we, we have like we want to let her watch like mickey mouse sometimes but that's more so when we're like on a road trip or something like that. Oh or, yeah, and even then, like, I mean, it's typically it's like, well, like the it, movies. It's, yeah, it's, it's like more the, the older, older, more the older Mickey Mouse stuff, like which, Christmas episodes. Which yeah, you maybe loves. is no better, but typically there is like a storyline with not like constant moving sure, and yeah. dancing and whatever. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't know. For all I know, it's just as bad and yeah. brain melting yeah. as the rest of them, but. You know. I find it less overstimulating, so I'm just assuming yeah. that it's like less when I was growing up. My mom used to say that she used to put the only thing that used to keep me quiet was a Pooh Bear episode, and it usually gave her 20 minutes to be able to make Didn't. dinner without me going crazy. Or yeah, so she used to throw that on type thing. But like other than that, like it might have been like a special movie night or this and that and we would be either outside or doing something else like you see these things like iconic pictures of like the 90s on 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 instagram and it's like do you remember this and it was like a picture of like everyone's bike piled in front of a house and like that's you don't see that anymore like i was talking about like you don't see like kids playing road hockey and all that stuff outside anymore like i used to spend hours from when I was like 10 to basically 16, 17 outside. And then you would, my mom would be like, oh, where were you for the last eight hours? I said, well, I was at so-and-so. Why didn't you call me? Oh, I couldn't get to a phone. Yeah. There's no, there's no excuse with that now. Like kids have phones and the technology now. It's like you have an Which, Apple watch or whatnot and you know exactly where your kid is. So. Yeah. And I was going to say like in some ways it is great. And like this is where like I get that there is benefits to, you know, the advancements in technology. Like because we've talked about like if we were to ever go to Disney, like my kids would be wearing an air tag the whole time. Yeah. Or even not even just Disney, just anywhere that like there's a huge crowd or whatever. Like people. I want to be able to track my kid to the exact location that they are at. And so obviously that wasn't something that was possible 20 years ago. Yeah. So things like that, like I'm grateful for that. I just, I worry about what all of this looks like for them. And 
not even so much about how much more it's going to change, but even just the way that they think about us spending time. Like, that honestly is my biggest thing. Yeah, how they remember us. Yeah, like, I don't want my kids to think back on their childhood and think about you and I with our faces looking at our phone and not talking to them and connecting with them and playing with them and... Yeah. Or even just teaching them that, like, it's okay to have a different set of rules for one set, you know, it's okay for kids to have a different set of rules than parents have. And I don't know. I just always want them to think that we were fair. Yeah. I don't know. It stresses me out. It's just a whole other avenue for mom guilt. Yeah. It is what it is, right? I guess. You, can, you can only do what you can. Like we're like we're doing our best with how we are navigating this digital age. Yeah, I, think. I do think we could do better. I see. I don't. Think we're, for, I don't think we're doing our best. Okay. I think we we're, can do better. There's always room for improvement, but we're doing what we can right now. Some days I think we do great. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's it, it is hard, especially if like you you start implement you start introducing these things, and then they like, oh, I want to watch so and so on the tablet, and I'm like, well, we only use the tablet for long trips and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, I mean, that kind of thing, I think that we're pretty good about maintaining. Yeah. Like, I mean, she has definitely watched things on the tablet inside the house at times yeah. but like i could probably count on one hand the number of times she's done that yeah that's something we've been pretty consistent about you know staying consistent with and i do like we've talked we have not actually like implemented but i would like to moving forward because not even just our ability to c- connect with the kids even just our ability to connect between you and i like if we were to have one day a week that we just put the phones away mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, we can still have our phones on us. Like, we take pictures with our phones. Like, our whole life is piled into that. Yeah. But, like, signing out of Instagram, TikTok, like, these things that just get you stuck in, like, the mindless scrolling Mm. and just having it actually be just a phone for a day. Yeah. Yeah. And I just think that it'd be so much easier. And, like, those are going to be the days that our kids are, like, feel so special about. Yeah. Because that is one thing that I have been thinking, like, recently is, like, thinking about, like, what days our kids are going to be, like, feel like our core memories for them. Yeah. And, like, what things made their childhood feel magical. And, like, I feel like a night like tonight... Like, Addie really wanted to do a bath bomb, and we'd been outside, and it was hot and whatever. And so we did a bath bomb and let her have a popsicle in the bathtub. And it's, like, something so simple, but she was so excited about it. She was super excited about that. Because you promised her, and you're like, oh, well, maybe you can do a shower with Dad. I had set set the expectation. I did tell her this morning. I said, you can only have a bath bomb. Yeah, we're coming home If we do... If we do bath time early, I said, like, yeah. when I'm making dinner, if you have your bath, then we'll have time for a bath bomb. Mm-hmm. So I had kind of given myself an out already because I was like, I don't want to get carried away with the day mm-hmm. and then have to figure out how to accommodate this promise that I made her. Yeah. But she was really looking forward to it, so I felt like I did need to figure out a way to make it work. Yeah, she... Yeah, so then that kind of like helps with winding down. I do, she does have this obsession now that obviously Paige did when she was a kid. She loves watching Martha Stewart to kind of wind down before bed, watching Martha Stewart cook and. I did. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know that I watched Martha Stewart to fall asleep, but if I woke up, like if I woke up in the middle of the night or if I was having trouble falling asleep, so I was up really late. My mom used to put that on TV. Yeah. So it's not like crazy stimulating, but. I mean, I don't even think she actually really watches no, it. It's just like just, the background. Oh, she's noise. like, oh, look at Martha's making a pizza. 
So she gets all excited, and I think she she associates that with a lot, with bedtime, which is, I don't know, good. Yeah, we do not watch it at, like, no. 2 p.m. No. It's definitely a pre-bedtime everybody's yeah, running down. Usually, usually she goes to bed. As soon as that's on, she goes to bed within, like, five minutes. Yeah. So I think, that, I think that's a good thing, like, having things that associate with winding down and yeah i mean all the childhood experts would tell us that we probably shouldn't have it be a tv show but right i mean as long as i feel like it's educational like well i just feel like i don't know i mean everything you do is wrong navigating with digital age right like there's so much of this stuff right and and like you have to choose and pick what what works best and what you think is good and you have the experts saying this and this but like you just do what works best for your family i mean this is really like this is how i used to go to sleep every night when i was a kid we my parents have had a double bed my whole life somebody made them their bed frame for their wedding so they've never like they won't get rid of it and this is how we went to every single night when I was a kid. We used to, all the kids would pile into my parents' bed with my mom. That's wild. We'd fight over who got to snuggle directly next to my mom. She would read us a book. Mm-hmm. And then my parents would put on, like, grown-up TV, which was usually, like, checking the weather for the next day. No. And, like, I don't know, Martha Stewart or something equally as kind of boring to a kid so that we weren't super interested in it and we would fall asleep while they could like have some like adult wind down time yeah and my dad would sit in the chair beside the bed because there was no room for him with the whole brood of kids in bed and like that's just one of those things that like you know out of all the things that i think back on my childhood and think like yes i definitely want to do that no like that's definitely something that i don't want to repeat with our kids like i don't know i just always felt so safe like my parents never like pushed us out i mean i have opinions on the whole sleep culture yeah that could be another episode yeah (laughs) but like i don't know i just value the fact that my parents never were like I don't think, like, I never, maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember being with my parents and whatnot when I was falling asleep. But I do know that my sister was like that. And she'd, like, either fall asleep in the bed. Like, I know my parents used to, like, my parents used to come into our bed and fall asleep. But we never had any sort of, like, TV. The only thing that I do remember is having a radio. Oh, yeah, we were not... I had a I, radio and a stereo in my room for I was the like time. 12 before I was allowed to have a CD player in my room. So like to, no radio. I used to radio. listen to late night like talk shows and go to sleep. Yeah. My, my parents were like no TVs in our bedrooms. I didn't have a TV in my bedroom until I was. I can't remember. I maybe in university. I had a little small tube TV. My parents had bought it, bought me and my sister, but it had no cable. Like, I think had, like, I was in university before I had a TV in my bedroom. And so no TV in our bedrooms. I wasn't allowed to have like, I mean, I guess I had a clock radio yeah. for like an alarm clock when I was younger that I never used. But like, I I don't even think I was allowed to have a CD player in my room until I was like yeah, I preteen, teenager. Well, yeah, I think that was, yeah, my that was... mom's thing was always like, I don't, like, I think she wanted our rooms to be somewhere that we felt safe, but not somewhere that we wanted to, like... Spend our time. Spend, spend, our, time. spend our time in. Yeah. Like, she wanted us to spend our day in family areas, not yeah. our own private little areas. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess it works. Like, they're really... The only time I ever really hung out in my room was when I was, like, playing with dolls or Barbies yeah. or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I sometimes wish that we could just like raise our kids and like that. Yeah. It was also like the whole video game thing too. Like I, I grew up playing video games, but it wasn't like today. Like now today you can be a graphic designer. You can be a full-time job playing video games now. So like, yeah, good even... on some people. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm not poo-pooing anyone who plays video games. I think it's super cool that you can do a passion or whatnot that 
I'm not a big video that. game kind of gal. Yeah, but we also like I'm we had Game Boys that we could play on long drives. Yeah. And like I can remember periods of life growing up where we would have a Nintendo and then not have one and then have one. Like it kind of was wishy washy yeah, whether we your, had your brothers have played video games though too. Right? Yeah, so... now but yeah. I need you to understand that the parents that my younger brothers had versus the parents, <laughs> the parents that, like, me and, like, I grew up playing, like my older siblings had, like, Nintendo. I feel like that's, yeah, Nintendo 64. No, no, the original Nintendo. Oh, no. We had, like, with, like, that's like, yeah, that kind of, yeah, oh, that yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't I, that Nintendo 64, the, no. the box one? That was the original Nintendo. Nintendo okay, 64 mind. was the one with like the, they oh. had like the three prong. No, never mind. The OG Nintendo. Yeah. Yes, that's what we had. And we then I had, was a PlayStation. Like after we, I, after that kind of went, I was like a PlayStation guy until When we still. had a gaming system in our house, it was the OG Nintendo then. And then the next one I can think of that we had in like a family area was the Wii. Yeah. And I was like a pretty so many like event. we had so many like we had the Wii and whatnot. We never really we used it, but it wasn't like a crazy thing. And I used to just play only certain games on PlayStation and whatnot. But it wasn't. I went through a period where I played a lot, but that was like my teen years. But yeah. when I was a kid, like NHL hockey and just sports games, and it wasn't like I'd rather play road hockey, go outside with the boys and play road hockey, like. He was saying you don't see you don't see a lot of actual road hockey anymore like you no. see kids like potentially no, we just, outside playing in their driveways by themselves we weren't allowed we weren't allowed like when we got home i can remember when we got home from school like there was like a you cannot step foot into the house other than to go to the bathroom until this time yeah like i would like to instill that like it with our children like kind of creating that like that situation when they grow older yeah i'm well, not gonna force it on them but, but like, this is like kind of what you were saying about the whole creativity piece though too i think it's a lot harder like watching addie's imagination when we were at the cottage on mm -hmm. our little vacation so she did have some screen time but we weren't having very much screen we weren't having as much screen yeah. time and she didn't have her toys she didn't so it was like almost like a double whammy like didn't have the toys didn't have the screen time didn't have and it's like i think it's good for kids to be bored sometimes because i think that's when you like force them to be more creative and like her imagination over the last like six months i'd say has blossomed yes and while we were at the cottage, it was so funny to me because before it was like her imagination was like starting to come up and you could see her like playing with toys, having actual conversations. Yeah. But while we were at the cottage, she was like imagining whole dogs and everything. <laughs> yeah. Like I took her down she to was. the, I took her down to the play structure one day and she was making me push her cat in the swing. Mm -hmm. And she made me pick up the Paw Patrol puppies Mm -hmm. She kept pretending that they were following her around and that they were our, like, pet dogs. And she was making me, like, lift them up into the car. Like, it was the same thing with me. She was, like, we're down on the play structure and it was, like, this little, like, whole, like poke through thing. And she would, like, she's like, Daddy, what would you like to eat? I'll make you, I'll make you food. And I said, oh, I'll have, I'll have this. And she'd be, oh, we're all out of this. But do you want chicken and fries? <laughs> I was like... Sure, I'll have chicken and fries. And she uh -huh. went and made all the chicken and fries, brought them over to me, and she goes, here, Dad, just blow on it. It's hot. Yeah. Well, oh, my God. I went to put her in the car one day, and she's like, oh, Mom, pick up Sky." So I'm like, okay. No, Mom, you didn't pick her up. She's still out there. <laughs> I was like, okay. Damn. And it's like, I just feel like if you constantly are – like occupied yeah. by other things. I feel like there's not the same potential for imagination to come out. Yeah. And so I just, I think that's also where I worry that like all these 
pieces of technology. Like it's getting so much easier and easier to have technology on you at all times. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how does that impact their ability to play and meet other people and interact with one another and have an imagination? Like, what does this look like in another 10 years? Yeah. Like those goggles that you were talking to me about the other day. The Apple Apple VR goggles. Yeah. yeah, And it's like, so what happens? Like, are we going to have children that literally don't know how to experience the real world? Mm Mm-hmm. Without it's a shade of technology like on wild. you? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like you're going to take wild. a kid for a walk through a forest and they're literally not going to understand what a tree is. Like, how does. No, the tree, you're going to look through these goggles and you're going to look at the tree and it's going to tell you this is a maple tree. It's going to tell you how old it is and how long it's been there and what t- what you. Yeah, it's going to be wild. But yeah, no, they're going to. They're, I it's just think that there's weird. there's not that same ability to appreciate what you're looking at when it's like there's that lens of like yeah. technology. It's like when you're having an experience and you're so busy taking pictures that you forget to look. Enjoy the moment. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. It just makes me think, actually. Remember when we were getting married? And was it the photographer? Like, Vaughn told us, like, at some point, just, like, yeah. stand back and just, like, look. Look, yeah. And I remember all day, it's like, you're rushing to get your bridal photos done. You're rushing yeah. to get to the church. You're rushing to get your you family know. photos done. You're rushing to get this. You're, you know, you're doing whatever, and everybody's coming up to talk to you, and everybody wants a picture, and everybody wants to create that memory and do whatever. And then it's, like, we took, like, two minutes. Yeah. And we just, like, stood back and just, like, watched all of these people that we love come together to celebrate us. Mm -hmm. And we just got to stand there and watch everybody having a good time. Where, like, nobody was talking to us. Nobody was taking pictures. Nobody, like, like, it was just you and I just watching everybody. And, like, I'm so grateful that he told us to do that because that was one of the best memories from that night. For me, anyway. Mm -hmm. And it just makes me think that it's like we're getting so involved in technology that it's like I feel like it's getting to the point that it's virtually impossible to have those moments where you like take a step back, put the phone down, put the whatever. Like, yeah. What good is having this perfect memory of a moment that you didn't even take the chance to enjoy in the real? Yeah. Time anyway. Yeah. Like you might take a picture of it and be like, oh, I remember that. Time. Yeah. I'm, but if, yeah. But if I love a good photo shoot, photo yeah. memories, like I love those things. But if you are so wrapped up in capturing the moment that you forget to live in the moment, like what good mm-hmm. is that? Yeah. You might not remember the context and whatnot of the actual day. Or, or it's just not even going to feel as special. If you're so, if you are constantly watching, your kids do something through a screen while you're taking their picture. Yeah. And you don't even get to like eyes on the actual person as they take their first steps or Mm -hmm. say their first word or do all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like your whole memory is literally the image that you took. Like you never saw it in real life. You only ever saw it through the screen because you're so busy staring at the screen to take the picture. Yeah. And I'll, I'm all for, I'm all for documenting our Obviously. lives and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all for documentation of just like our lives and for us and for everyone else that we can help and whatnot along the way. But yeah, there is something to say about stepping back in any situation, but stepping back, especially just kind of to evaluate this to evaluate what's happening in front of your eyes and like actually get to experience it authentically Mm -hmm. and i just feel like it's so much harder to experience life authentically if you are constantly wrapped up in technology so like all in all i think we kind of reiterate kind of kind of come back to all this saying that technology is gonna be here and it's gonna involve it's gonna evolve and 
AI and cell phones and virtual reality stuff. And it's going to continue to grow and our kids are going to obviously adapt to it. But hopefully as we grow as parents, we kind of instill what we learned as kids and hopefully they continue that as well. Obviously they're going to, they're going to be like, oh, we're tech savvy dad, stop being old and whatnot. But hopefully that's going to grow as they grow type thing. Yeah. And sometimes I do wonder whether the whole like idea of like the no better, do better thing will come around with the technology piece. Because I think you're right. Like, I think it is just going to continuously evolve and it is like, it's, well, the, it's like, just always going well, to be too, there. Right? It's like, we've never, moved, up internet yeah, we've never moved back. Like Wi-Fi we've always continued to move stuff, forward. Yeah. yeah. So I do think we're just going to continue to move forward and see all these, you know, advancements. But I do just hope that maybe like at some point our kids get to the point where it's like, I don't know, they see the benefit of trying to find the balance between yeah technology and being able to engage in real life and whatnot i think that's ultimately what you're trying to find because obviously i feel like there's obviously going to be people out there that that follow the guidelines and do everything to a t but i think finding that balance hard yes so finding that balance between like I said, real life kind of interaction, creating memories Mm. and the digital age of everything that's happening right now. And I'm still going to hate it all. Yeah. You're still going to hate it all. (laughs) I got to keep on forcing on you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with our children and whatnot and show them the, I'll be the little old lady. Yeah. Oh my God. That's like a whole other like yeah, whole paranoia. The idea of our kids being on the internet just yeah. freaks me out. That'll be episode like 4,000. Yeah. Like the first time that our kids want like an Instagram. Yeah. That's going to be. Yeah. Like, I just think like, what did my parents do? I mean, this goes into just raising our kids mm-hmm. overall, like as a whole. Like, I don't know exactly what my parents did that made me never have a desire to do drugs or seek strangers. Yeah. Okay, I say seek strangers out on the internet, but, like, I literally met you on Tinder, so, like... Yeah. <laughs> within, within reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I don't know how they did it, but, like, I had no desire to talk to strangers on the internet when I was a child. I had no desire to ever try to meet up with some strangers it's just new so, person it's just on the so internet. Much easier now, and I feel like a lot of kids are kind of lonely because of the because it's so hard to make real connections with You're, people. Everyone's so connected, and that's how you but connect. they're so distant at the same time. Yes, yeah, it's so true. Like we're so grateful for the technology. Like we live, you know, at hours away. Connections to people, but we're just so distant. In somewhat real life. Yes. Well, because there's always that, like, little barrier. The screen. Yeah. Whether you're literally sitting next yeah. to the person or not. Like, I mean, even right before we right before we started this, you were asking me, like, oh, do you like doing the podcast? And mm-hmm. I, like I said to you, like, it's so nice. I mean, no, I never would have thought that we would be doing this. <laughs> but honestly, my favorite part is really just the fact that it gives us like an hour once a week where we sit down and we have a conversation and there's no nothing like no technology we're not watching there's the tv isn't on in the background babies we don't have our phones in our hands we always do it when the kids i mean for the most part are sleeping or yeah content to not be in the middle of things And it's like, it is honest to God, even with you being home, it's honestly hard to find that time, it feels like. And it shouldn't be. It should be easy to find an hour to talk to your husband every day. That's tough. 
but there's just so much stuff going on. But it doesn't have to. We yeah. and this is where we could be like could be better. We I know that we could be better. But it is my favorite part about doing this is that it does give us an hour every week to just sit down and chat without the distractions. Yeah. And yeah, the thought of our kids being on the internet is Yeah. We'll get back to you on that one. My God. It'll come sooner. It'll come faster than we think. Well, yeah, you think about all these kids are like 12 walking around with cell phones. Yeah, even earlier, to be honest with you. Mm, I know. And it's just hard, like, you don't want your kid to be the odd man out and not have these things or not know anything about what these people are talking about. But at the same time, you want to protect them because once you're on a phone, you know that they're going to have that thing glued to them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, I want to protect their youth for as long as possible while also not letting them be like the odd man out. Yeah. And it's like just one more struggle to try to balance. Yeah. I think that's, I think we'll cut it there with the episode. So hopefully everyone enjoyed that. If you have any questions, if you are raising any kids right now in the digital age, or if you have any any thoughts on the matter, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like what you're hearing. If you are listening to us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a five-star review if you enjoy everything. and come back and listen you can subscribe to those channels as well but yeah we're gonna have to do Everett stretches now he's kind of waking back up again Poor guy. and then we're gonna have to get to bed because we have <laughs> we have a long day tomorrow too what do we have tomorrow we have both our kids home it's a long day I just <laughs> on home tomorrow she's going to daycare oh yeah she's going to daycare <laughs> scratch that if you're listening to us <laughs> in the morning, hope you have a good day. But if you're listening to us tonight, hope you have a good night, everybody. <laughs>